Hey, how's it going YouTube? This is your boy Chosen and welcome to this week's episode review and boy is it a good time to be a Boruto fan. In the span of one week, we got two great episodes and another chapter. Content creators are e I mean the fan base is eating good right now. This episode, even though it wasn't as action packed as the last, was still pretty good on its own. Now I probably need to warn those who are anime onlys because, you know, me being a channel that covers everything Boruto, including the manga, I'm gonna bring in a few points from the manga in this episode to get my points across. So that's your spoiler warning for today. But anyways, let's not waste any time and Boruto episode 187 starts off actually literally where the ending of the last episode took place. And that's Konohamaru and the team reflecting on a job well done. Like we know, Al spots Kashin Koji atop a building summoning a new toad we've never seen before called Summoning Steam Toad and I gotta say the design of this toad is actually pretty dope. The toad has clearly been modified by a model as we see it later spout out steam through its body and I say a model because well for those who remember Kashin Koji was created by a model so every move he has was kind of created with him not received through training or Mount Miyoboku. As Kashin Koji summons a toad the building he was on starts to collapse and as a last effort of redemption Ao uses a water style technique to push Boruto out of the way, successfully saving Boruto, but crushing Ao's entire body. And we literally see Ao die slowly, and for what I assume to be painful as hell too. Kashikoji then brings up literally what I just said, how Ao possibly wanted to die as a shinobi, attempting to redeem himself through saving Boruto's life. Koji says he couldn't believe Ao failed to defeat the team, especially seeing as how he possessed some pretty overpowered ninja tools, like the firebomb minigun, the drones, and the ninjutsu absorption gauntlet. The team then realizes that Kashikoji is with Kara due to his connection with Ao. We then get a zoomed out shot of Kashin Koji again, with his summoning for the first time introducing himself to Boruto and the gang. And I gotta say, yes the toad looks dope, but god damn that thing looks like it's been through hell and back. Twice. It's not even looking at the team for fuck's sake. Just let it die, Koji. Koji shows his respect to Boruto as he says that was a magnificent battle, as he's in awe that Boruto is able to defeat Ao practically by himself. Again, when you look at Ao's moveset in the battle, yeah, it was pretty impressive for a Boruto who was literally 12. Boruto fiercely asks Koji how he could have just watched his friend basically get his ass whooped without stepping in. Koji then speaks a line that reflects his own personality and perspective. How Shinobi with emotions is useless, but there are used for tools who only perform missions. Now let's go forward to the Koji vs Jigen battle in chapter 46. This philosophy of Shinobi's being nothing more than a tool was foreshadowed all the way back from this episode in this chapter. Jigen tells Koji that no matter how you put it, you're nothing more than a tool being used by Amato. Koji then tells Jigen that he's fine with being a tool, for that's what Shinobi are. Koji's philosophy is something that fairly resembles the teachings of Zabuza and Haku. That arc for as early as it was in the Naruto franchise was one of the most impactful for his development. So to bring it up again is pretty cool and I don't doubt that maybe the plan with Koji's development development in the future is to change his perspective and understand that there is more meaning when it comes to being a shinobi than just carrying out your mission. Anyways, after Koji's line, Boruto again, still upset, tells him that shinobis aren't tools you just throw away once you're done with them. Konohamaru, for some reason, then demands Koji to tell him everything he knows about Kara and just like all of us, Kashin Koji just glares at him as if he's a dumbass for asking a dumbass question. Koji then summons multiple pillars in order for him to perform a paralysis technique called Sealing Jutsu Frog Gulp. Seem to be a... Uh, a lot of toad name techniques here. Hmm. Koji tells them that he had no intentions of doing this, but due to them knowing too much, it has to be done. He then summons fire from his hands for what I assume is with the intent to use the same technique he did on Victor. Then all of a sudden, Konohamaru uses a ceiling release technique he had as a backup. The only thing that threw me off here was the fact that just prior, it seemed like the team literally couldn't move, but when unzipping his jacket, he did it effortlessly. But regardless, it was that or they all die, so it, it is what it is. Kashin Koji says he should have expected this as Konohamaru is a Jonin, not someone who should be stopped this easily. And the line Koji says just basically determined Konohamaru's fate. Show me what a leaf Jonin is capable of. And knowing how Jonin's just constantly get their asses beat, and I mean like Kid Kakashi was able to take down two, so knowing this, it was wraps. Konohamaru takes out his knuckle brass weapon in preparation to the fight. With a little taijutsu, Kashin Koji takes him down with one hand, but we then realize it was just a shadow clone. Konohamaru behind him summons fire style dragon bomb. Shout out to Sarutobi Sensei. Of course, as we can all expect, Kashin Koji uses a substitution jutsu and now gets behind Konohamaru on some Sasuke vs Itachi type shit. We then get some more taijutsu as Konohamaru gets his ass beat so effortlessly. And as this is going on, I'm instantly reminded of the Naruto vs Konohamaru fight, like how he was getting thrown around like a ragdoll. Koji mocks him by saying, is this the best a leaf joining can do? Actually Koji, no, they usually get knocked out or killed earlier, so hats off to Konohamaru for staying in it this long. Koji then appears in front of Konohamaru who summons a Rasengan in hopes to get any kind of 
of damage done. But unexpectedly, well, to non-manga readers, Koji himself also performs a Rasengan cancelling out the attack with an equal force. Konohamaru now in shock and worry wonders who this man really is. All of a sudden, Konohamaru spots a toad on his leg as it transforms to flames that start to burn up his entire body. Like literally, the voice acting was pretty well done here as he was burning to death. We then finally learn the name of this technique as it's called the Trance of True Flames, a fire style technique that cannot be extinguished. Very, very similar in a way to the Amaterasu. The only notable difference, and I'm not sure if this was something intended by the directors of this episode, but even though it does work in a very similar way, the flames themselves seem to take a longer time to kill its target. Meaning, Amaterasu is still the better technique, but that doesn't take away the fact that this is basically a regular jutsu. Whereas with Amaterasu, it's an ocular jutsu activated only when one possesses the Mangekyo Sharingan. And when I said it takes a while for Konohamaru to die, like, I mean it takes a while. Like, if I was Konohamaru, I'd just ask to die at that point. Like, god damn. Boruto starts to grow furious again as he slowly sees Konohamaru dying and finally activates the long-awaited Karma Seal. Koji sees this and is shocked as Boruto completely absorbed the Paralysis Seal and the flames killing Konohamaru, saving his life. The introduction to Boruto's Karma was pretty cool and to make it even better, I believe they added in a new epic soundtrack, so good on them. Koji, still in shock, is amazed by the sudden fact that Boruto is the one possessing the Karma Seal. Realizing now that the one who killed Momoshiki was Boruto. As Boruto rolls up his sleeve, he sees the full outline of the seal going all the way across from his hand to his eye. He then passes out, which was said by Koji to be due to him activating Karma's true form for the first time. Sada runs over to Boruto like she always does and worry for him. Koji approaches the two, mentions how this was Boruto's first time, and then walks away. Sada, growing upset over not understanding what happened to Boruto, literally almost got herself killed. As she charges for Koji, but is stopped by Mitsuki yet again, telling her not to change Koji's decision to let them live. Koji commends Mitsuki by saying, as one would expect from Orochimaru's kid. We know with Kara, they've been an organization that's been around for a pretty long time. Their plan has clearly been thought through carefully, and they've also done their research on everyone. We saw this with Victor when Orochimaru appeared and was intimidated, clearly showing he knows what he's capable of. As Koji disappears, the team starts to head back, and we get a scene with Sarada supporting Boruto. Again, showing her deep worry for him, which has clearly been shown multiple times throughout the anime. Like, you could probably find a compilation on YouTube if you search it up, I'm not joking. As they walk further down, they come across Katasuke and Konohamaru for what seems to be Ao's grave. Konohamaru said he can't forgive him for what he did to Muji. But because of his last decision to die as a shinobi, he must at least honor that. Boruto questions just who the hell is Kashin Koji anyways. Konohamaru says that he must be a shinobi due to him using ninjutsu, but Boruto denies this, saying shinobis don't use their comrades as tools, heavily resembling the theme of the Land of Waves arc with Zabuza and Haku. We are then taken to Kara's hideout where code is shown on a computer screen, being looked at by Amato. Amato leaves his office to get more coffee as just as he does this, Sneaky Delta snoops in to get information on code to see if he was the perpetrator all along. As she hears a model return, she runs away, revealing that he's clean. And with Boro and Code innocent, the only one left is Kashin Koji. We're then taken to what seems to be a bunch of giant vase containers, basically the same ones we saw when Sasuke and Sai travel to the Hidden Rain in hopes of discovering Kara. As Code comes into light, he says, why is it always him? Another moment in this episode that foreshadows the future of the manga, to literally the recent chapter where we find out Code was a failed vessel and had high praise for Ishiki, wanting to be the true vessel for his one and only god. As everyone is walking back, Konohamaru says they must return to the village as too much shit just went down and he has a lot to report, postponing the search for whatever was inside the container. Just then, Mitsuki spots something and heads towards it. What he finds are the same machines that attacked them at the airship, except they are all completely destroyed. Chamaru then makes his appearance after getting lost and leads the team to the one who caused all the damage. And I just want to say to everyone who kept up with the anime despite everything just like me, congratulations, because we are finally rewarded with the first real appearance of Kawaki. Obviously this isn't his introduction, that's going to be next episode, but yes, after so many years of when's Kawaki coming? Boruto episode 187 and Boruto episode 188. That everyone is Kawaki's full introduction into the series. As Boruto goes on to check out Kawaki, he notices that he also possesses a karma seal, and that's basically where this episode ends. So yeah, like I said, it wasn't as action packed and high quality as last episode, but nonetheless, we for the first time see the full karma seal and Kawaki in the anime, and also got a little preview of Kashin Koji abilities. This episode may have not had the same animation quality as the last, but there was more information given than last episode. For the animes only, they now know what the Karma Seal can kind of do. They know that Borto isn't the only one who possesses this seal, as they could try to tie in an associate connection to this kid 
like how Boruto is somewhat connected to Momoshiki. And they now know how strong Kashin Koji is and how he's able to perform a Rasengan and use Toad Summonings. Uh huh. Anyways guys, let me know what you think about this episode in the comments down below. Just like last week, I cannot wait for next week's episode. And for my manga readers, y'all know why. Thank you guys for watching all the way until the end, and I'll catch you on the next one.